In this video, which is brought to you by these Asioma power pedals, I wanted to discuss a topic with you that's been on my mind for some time, but I have refrained from publishing this video because I can appreciate as a beginner cyclist, there is a lot of new things to take on board. So adding another thing to the list of things that you're already trying to figure out, I didn't really want to be that guy. However, I am hoping for those of you who have clicked on this video, perhaps you're just stepping out of that beginner phase and you feel that training might be a good focal point for you to take your road cycling to the next level, or maybe you're one of those individuals that has a real yearning to improve your cycling performance and you wanna start on the right path. So the first topic I wanted to discuss in this video is what's the consideration with heart rate training, which is a very important measurement in its own right and I could argue is the most important measurement, but as a beginner cyclist, there's some things you need to be aware of because no doubt as a beginner, you've either already invested into a heart rate strap or you're more willing to invest into a heart rate strap because they're 10 to 20% of the price of a power meter. But here's the thing, if endurance sports is relatively new to you or using data to improve your performance in endurance activity is new, then heart rate is simply a tricky measurement to use if you're not intimate with it. First up, heart rate is a variable measure, meaning at times your heart rate will beat faster, slower, drift more rapidly, all based on the exact same power output. This variability could be based on stress, sleep, caffeine, heat, cold, current fitness levels, the list goes on. Secondly, heart rate is slow to respond to top end output, meaning if you wanna target any upper end zones in training, where the time in effort is say that one to five minute effort range, or what we describe as VO2 max efforts and above at the RCA, which is a very important area of fitness you wanna target then, if you're using heart rate exclusively, you're gonna have a lot of trouble learning how to effectively target this very important area of your cycling. Let's look at some data points from RCA members that will help quantify what I'm saying to you here. Let's look at some data from a zone two ride on an indoor trainer. This is 70% of functional threshold power or FTP, which is essentially your hour power and you can work out your FTP using protocols such as the half Monty on Wahoo system, the ramp test on Zwift or the 20 minute test outside. I'll link to some details below if you wanna check out how to perform the FTP test to get your own FTP number. With this member, you can see their heart rate drifts rapidly over the course of a one hour session while pedaling at a consistent zone two power output. If we remove the green line and just followed heart rate, this member would have steadily reduced that green power line in order to minimize that heart rate drift getting out of control and keeping their zone two heart rate within a specific area. When in actual fact, because this person has an underdeveloped aerobic system, we're better off following the green line within the one hour period and then over time, quite rapidly, we'll see the heart rate line drop for the same power output, demonstrating an improvement in cardiovascular efficiency. This member's heart rate is simply beating less and drifting or stressing less for the exact same output. Of course, there are times, especially over longer zone two rides, to keep an eye on heart rate drifting and respecting what's happening there. But if you can't pedal for one hour at this zone two power output, and we like to use 70% of functional threshold power, top end zone two, because an hour isn't a long time, and we're trying to see if the aerobic system is gonna stress or not. If you can't see your heart rate drift by less than 10 beats, this is mostly, not always, but mostly from what we've seen at the RCA, a sign that you have work to do on your base aerobic fitness. And the quickest way you can level out this heart rate and improve your aerobic base fitness is to not follow heart rate because you're following a variable output measurement that is controlled by an underdeveloped aerobic system that will delay the conditioning of your base fitness. Now stay tuned because at the RCA, we've got a study that we're currently working on, looking at RCA members that will 
go into quite a lot of detail about this zone two training and heart rate drift. Secondly, let's look at some data from an RCA member completing some VO2 max efforts. VO2 max in the RCA's world is zone five or 106 to 120% of functional threshold power or 90% plus of max heart rate. But before we delve into the data here, I wanted to discuss a partner of the RCA and the sponsor of today's video being these Asioma power pedals. As a cycle coaching business, one thing that we do really appreciate about the Asioma power pedals from a coaching standpoint for beginner to intermediate road cyclists in particular is ease of use. I was a crank based user for a number of years and getting them installed and getting them changed over is an absolute nightmare. With the Asioma power pedals, it's as basic as installing any other pedal system which can be purchased for either Shimano or Look Keo pedal systems. And you literally just screw them in. The only addition is you need to charge them where the batteries last up to 50 hours per charge and then a quick setup via their app followed by a calibration to your cycling head unit. Then you're good to go. The Asioma power pedals send both amp plus and Bluetooth signals from the spindles to the head unit to provide instantaneous power so you can hit your power zones. Finally, the Asioma power pedals as a duo come in at 584 USD or as an Uno, 347 USD, meaning double-sided power versus one-sided power. So as a beginner trying to keep costs down, there is an option for you there. So here, you can see almost two separate upward trends, the green line being power and the red line being heart rate. This is for the same effort, let's not forget. So why is this the case? Well, power is a mechanical or electronic device. It's instantaneous and your heart is an internal organ and it takes time to reach its intended destination. But here's the thing. Once you understand this is how your body or how your heart responds to a VO2 max effort and you become intimate with it, you will then know how to train to heart rate. But if you are a beginner and you've never done this type of training with a power meter before and you're using heart rate exclusively for this very important VO2 max session, you will most likely go too hard out of the blocks in order to get the heart rate to its intended destination, 90% of max heart rate plus. And then when your heart rate reaches its intended destination or goal, and I've seen this before a lot as a road cycling coach, there is often a reduction in power as the fatigue induced from going too hard out of the blocks in the initial part of the effort kicks in. The net result is the true VO2 max zone is not really being worked as you're most likely going above VO2 max output to get the heart rate up and then possibly below VO2 max output as your heart rate hits the intended destination. Not hitting your VO2 max target goals, is that gonna be an issue? Well, yes, you're missing out on an important training session or an important physiological stress. And this longer term could end up holding your road cycling back. And this argument on VO2 max training, I could pose a very similar argument for the zone that sits above VO2 max, which is anaerobic capacity training or zone six. So hopefully these two examples, you're seeing how instantaneous and consistent power, that training metric can help guide us to more effective zone two training. And in this example, upper end interval training. This final one I'm gonna leave you with is perhaps the most important one for those beginners out there as well. And that is power tells us if we're improving or not. If we go back to heart rate once again, this measure doesn't really tell us independently if we're improving or not. And when you're a beginner at anything, you wanna know if you're getting better or not. Now, yes, when we align heart rate with the power measurement, it does provide great evidence of fitness improvements as we are identified with the heart rate drift example, but standalone, there's nothing specific we can really look at. Now, yes, your resting heart rate, not always, but often will reduce as you get fitter and your max heart rate will vary a little bit as well as your fitness fluctuates, but it's not a compelling data point. 
With power, however, we can really see if we're improving. It's like going to the gym and lifting weights. We know we're getting stronger when we're picking up heavier weights and doing the same amount of reps as before. However, with cycling, rather than looking at, say, repetitions as we would with the gym, we can look at specific periods of time, chunks like 10 seconds, one minute, five minute, and see if we're improving in those segments. No doubt when you're cycling, you're gonna push yourself a little bit. It could be a Zwift race, it could be a bunch ride, it could be a Strava comp. And by doing this, you can start to analyze the data. At the RCA, we use a training software called Today's Plan and we can examine our rides, where we've pushed it, and see if we've PB'd any segments from the darker blue line. Segments range all the way from max power output to three hours, but we typically like to look at 10 to 15 seconds, one minute, five minute, 10 minute, and 20 minutes. In this particular software, you can use the above filter to change date ranges. And if you're seeing some PBs in recent times, you know you're improving and on track. If you're not getting anywhere near your previous PBs and you're trying really hard to get there, perhaps it's time to reconsider what you're doing with your training. But irrespective, the power meter shines the light on if we're improving or not with tangible evidence. If you've gotten value from this video today, please don't forget to give it a like. And if you're after more information on power training, I have a free ebook, which looks like this, which you can download below. I'll catch you in the next video.